people always speak about alleviating poverty in Africa. It's a vast, magnificent continent filled with limitless potential. But you can get overwhelmed by how much needs to be done. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Captain Gomisa. We'll be landing in Nairobi shortly. Please fasten your seatbelts and prepare for landing. How do we make meaningful, sustainable change on the ground, unlocking this potential and changing lives? I've heard of a man who has come up with a plan, a social entrepreneur and inventor who has embraced the challenge and brought together local farmers, a bank, and a fantastic invention that seems to be turning things around. I had finished a PhD in engineering um, back in the US, and this was 1985. And I realized I was uniquely qualified to either try to teach or do weapons research or work for big oil. And none of that really sounded very exciting to me. I came down here for 10 months and I stayed for 18 years. And I came to look and see what could be done with technology to try to do something to help poverty. 80% of the poor in Africa are poor rural farmers. And the vast majority of them are doing rain-fed agriculture. And they all plant at the same time when it rains. They all harvest at the same time. They all try to sell into the same crowded market, all making very low margins, making enough to survive, but not enough to get out of poverty. Now, if you could switch away from rain-fed agriculture into irrigated agriculture, with irrigation you can bring out the crops throughout the year and you can get high value for your crops because you're bringing them out in that dry season when there are no other crops on the market. So what Kickstart does is it designs and mass markets very low-cost irrigation pumps that we get into the hands of millions of small-scale farmers, enabling them to, to grow high-value crops throughout the year, greatly increase their incomes and lift themselves that first step out of poverty. So we have two different kinds of pumps. Our best-selling pump is called the Moneymaker Max. You step back and forth on two treadles, and you now have two pistons and two cylinders, and you pull water up through a hose pipe out of a well, and then you push it through another hose pipe under pressure to the field. <laughs> now that's good, but that's $170. So we said, can we make a lower cost pump? And so this is when we invented something we call the Moneymaker Hip. Now we call it a hip pump because it looks like a hand pump but it's not actually operated using the arms. Instead it's operated with a sort of rocking motion, something like this. And this you can do all day. And that's why we call it the hip pump, it's almost a dancing motion. Doreen Katwiri and her family have been subsistence farmers for generations. Life was very different for them before the money maker pump came along. When it was in Orlean, we normally used to use buckets to water our plants. And now, with rain or with no rain, we are in the farm. changed our life. We used to be a very poor people, but now we are not rich, but we can afford ourselves full shelter. Yeah. So when the children go to school and my husband goes to the farm, Is that okay? Exactly. And then you can tidy with that one. This is good. Yes. It's good. See, I'm a good student. <laughs> okay, I can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, like that. Yeah. yeah. So the whole day, this is what you do. Yeah. And then when you go dancing, then your hip is good because then you get you have you when you dance. The right? <laughs> you are cutting sick when a man make a, you are harvesting kidogo sana. Sasa hata wakati si kuwa na manimeka, nigeachana na ukulima. Lakini wakati sasa nilunua manimeka, nikawa na bidi ya kufuatiria hiyo farming sasa.
Yeah, so this building here is actually where Kickstart started uh, way back in 1991. And right here on the edge of the slum called Karyobangi, this is where we keep all our pumps and the hose pipes. They pack very, very compactly here. Right. Um, because shipping is a big cost. These hoses here, the outlet hoses, which is like the garden hose that goes out to the field from right. the pump. And then as we go on through here, you'll see up above here and in front of us, these are the inlet hoses. And the inlet hoses are the ones that actually have to be a bit rigid because of the suction. And these are the locally sourced? Absolutely. These are all made here in Kenya, as are all those outlet hoses as well. Kickstart distributes pumps via local hardware stores and suppliers. Although the pumps are pretty sturdy and don't require much maintenance, farmers can buy any spare parts they need at the same stores. It's all very well to have a whole lot of small innovations, great ideas, but unless we can scale them up to large scale where we're talking about millions of farmers, we're not going to solve and meet the Millennium Development Goals. In our case, of course, the poverty goal, but also the education goal. And this is precisely where the kind of finance that City is giving us is enabling us to scale up on a much more rapid pace. City has been a catalyst and an enabler of progress in multiple ways in this country. It's a $2 million funding line that we've given to Kickstart as City, which enables them, in short, import and distribute um, pumps. We still are a developing part of the world. If you look at the high unemployment rates, if you look at the high level of farmers on a subsistence basis, um, empowerment is a key focus for the bank, empowerment is a key focus for, I believe, any industry or any uh, financial institution. The line of credit from City was very, very useful in terms of allowing us to buy more pumps into our working capital. We order from our factories in China, and of course there's about a month to ship a pump from China to Africa. We help Kickstart with uh, an array of services. Basically, we help them with all their global banking needs. We provide them with financing needs, so a line of credit that helps them uh, make their operations sustainable. This line of credit helps them bridge the gap when there is a cash flow crunch. We provide them with foreign exchange sourcing and we provide them with cash management. Martin, how are you? Hey, very good, Michael. Very good, very good to yeah. see you. Thanks. Thanks, you Thanks for coming yeah. by the office. No, Appreciate you're it. Welcome. Thanks for the appointment. Absolutely. Can you talk about the talks? Hey, well, here they, they are. are. Uh, we've sold over 240,000 of these, and we're selling about 20, 25,000 of these a year right now mm -hmm. across Africa. Mm -hmm. And over 80,000 of those have been sold here in Kenya. Um, and so we've got, you know, 65, 70,000 farmers actively using these pumps in Kenya, um, growing high value crops throughout the year and dramatically increasing their incomes. The city is such an important place for small-scale farmers like Doreen and Isaac. It's where all the trade and action happens and where their largest customer base lies. With Nairobi's population at over 3 million, it's a trading environment they cannot afford to ignore. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. <laughs> okay, cool. The traders here at the Fig Tree and Pomo Market at Ngara, in the center of Nairobi, buy some of their produce from small-scale farmers on the outskirts of the city. They rely on a steady supply of good quality produce to sell to their city customers. The moneymaker pumps are an essential part of this trading cycle. Hello Doreen, you all right? Yeah, yeah. So what's happening? I'm just picking managu for my customers. And what do you use managu for? It's an affitable. How do you cook it? Like curry. So I can't, I can't eat it? Like, no, 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 no. No? Yeah, it's sour. I mustn't try it? <laughs> yeah, don't try it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what it's about. This is the result of the moneymaker pump. Before moneymaker, we used to travel to our farm with bicycle. But now we have a motorcycle. Before Manimeka, we had a small muddy house, but now we have this house. Before Manimeka, we had one child, and now we have three. <laughs> what do you want for your children in the future? I want them to have good education so that they can have a good life. To date, 170,000 families 
have literally taken that first step out of poverty as a result of using our irrigation pumps. Kids are going to primary school, they're going to secondary school, they're even going on to university. Between them, they are growing enough fruits and vegetables that are feeding between 8 and 10 million people all of their fruit and vegetables need. Africa will be a tremendous area where you can solve the problem of agriculture because Africa is the future agriculture for the whole world. The idea of transforming technology to address the problem which were never addressed before. But the moment you see it's a problem-solving business, then you bring the technology to solve the problem. Your creative power becomes a lot more powerful than it had been before. I'd like to see it become a Pan-African initiative. I mean, if you look at Kenya, for example, if you consider that two-thirds of the people rely on small-scale land holdings, then I think there's still significant room to scale up and provide this opportunity to much more members of the population. The time that I've spent here with Martin, Doreen and Isaac has left a big impression on me. It's taught me one thing for sure. It is possible to invest in something that leads to amazing crops, money being made and people moving from poverty to a much better life. When you bring simple mechanics and innovation to an environment that is ripe for growth, amazing things begin to happen and lives are truly changed. To me, it's clear how the moneymaker pumps are making a difference here. Imagine the impact if they were available across Africa and the rest of the world.